Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a very complex problem. Well, we have e to the power z equals ln z and we're, we're going to start by looking at the graph of these two functions. When you check the graph of e to the z and ln z, you realize that they do not intersect. Uh, we can also look at it through the Desmos lens and this is a little better because notice that we have a dotted line which is y equals x or whatever you want to call it, y equals z that kind of shows you that a function and its inverse will be symmetrical right with respect to the, this diagonal because what what the inverse does is basically switch the roles right so as a conclusion there are no real solutions wait a minute isn't this channel a lot about complex numbers and it's called A plus B I? Yes. So I was going to say too bad, but not really. So how do we solve something like this? E to the Z equals ln Z. Well, that kind of looks very logarithmic and exponential at the same time, right? But here's what we're going to do. We're going to exponentiate this to get rid of the ln thing. Let's go ahead and take it to the exponential world and we can kind of take these, right, two things and write them as powers of e. e to the e to the z is e to the ln z. But by definition, e to the ln z is the same as z. By the way, this is also true for complex numbers just as it's true for real numbers. Now, we got something interesting. z equals e to the e to the z. So if I take z and exponentiate it like twice, I get the same thing. Wait a minute. I can keep doing this, can't I? Because look at this. z equals this, and I have another z here. So I can replace this z with this because this is z. Does that make sense? So in other words, the z here e to the e to the and I could probably just write it a little differently let's use a different color e to the z that yellow z can be replaced with this make sense so it's gonna look like this then e to the e to the e to the e to the z so this is z get it okay so it's the same as this one awesome but this is nice because we could keep doing this z equals now let take a look at this e to the e to the e to the e to the z and you can definitely replace this z with e to the e to the z again and you can keep doing this which means we can do this infinitely many times but wait a minute how do you solve an infinite exponential so i'm trying to say that hey this could be done infinitely many times and the e's are gonna go on forever as exponents and at some point at infinity we're going to place a z there but who knows when it's going to end right so how do we solve this well here's the thing this expression contains itself infinitely many times well, a lot of infinity is going on here so in other words we have z equals e to the e to the e dot 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 but take a look at this piece that's e to the e to the e to the d e dot 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 same thing so this is the same as z Therefore, z can be written as e to the power z. Wow. From z equals ln z, or e to the z equals ln z, we get to z equals e to the z, which of course means z equals ln z, right? Doesn't it mean that? Well, kind of. Anyways, so how do we find z from here, though? This is not any better, is it? Well, think Lambert's w function and you'll hopefully get a solution. What does Lambert's W function tell us? It tells us that if you have something like t e to the t, and if you W it, you get t. In other words, if you have a function like f of t equals t e to the t, its inverse is going to be Lambert's W function. Make sense? That's what it does. So it takes the t e to the t as an input. But wait a minute. How am I going to get something from something like that from here? I do need t e to the t, but my z and e to the z are on different sides. So why don't we bring them to the same 
side. Let's do it. And what we're going to do is we're going to solve this, look at the result from Wolfram Alpha, a couple of different things, okay? All right, let's continue. So now I have z equals e to the z. Now let's go ahead and multiply both sides by e to the power negative z. Can I? And it doesn't matter on which side you do multiply. I mean, if you don't like this and if you're really obsessed with this, I could probably go ahead and write this as z here and then put the e to the negative z on the right hand side. So you're always multiplying from the right. Yes, there are some rings, I think, that you can only multiply on the right hand side. They're not commutative, but hey, multiplication is commutative, right? At least on these sets. So e to the z times e to the negative z is the same as e to the zero, which is one. So we get the following results. z e to the negative z equals one. Awesome. I almost got t e to the t. All I need is a minus sign. So let's just go ahead and multiply both sides by negative one and we get the following results. And now this is going to be my what? T. You see that? T e to the t. If you call this t, you're going to get t e to the t. So we can w both sides, w or Lambert's w function of negative z. You could also call this, by the way, product log. I think um, Wolfram Alpha does not understand uh, W notation as far as I know. I could be wrong, but I tried it and it didn't work for me. But if you just enter a product log of something, then it'll work. Anyways, this gives us... By the way, how could you do something like this, right? Well, if you have A equals B, you can definitely apply Lambert's W on both sides, and this is always well defined. Not vice versa, because that would mean that the function needs to be injective. So, what does this give us? What's the output? Think about it. T, e to the t, it's going to be t, which is negative z. And now all I have to do is negate both sides, and z becomes negative w, negative 1. In other words, whatever the product log of negative 1 is, we're going to take the opposite of that. So that should be the answer, and this should be good enough, but let's go ahead and uh, look at the numerical value of z. That satisfies. Remember, at the beginning we said z cannot be real. But wait a minute, we're, we're talking about complex numbers here all the time. But guess what? Real numbers are also complex, right? Because they are a subset. Anyway, so what does Wolfram Alpha say? Well, Wolfram Alpha gives us the decimal approximation, which is 0 0.3831813150. You get the idea. Dot, 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 minus 1.33, so on and so forth, i. So it's written in standard form. But wait a minute. If this is the result, then why do I get two numerical solutions from Wolfram Alpha when I'm trying to, when I'm trying to solve e to the z equals ln z? Who can explain this? But notice that these numbers are conjugates. Why did I get two solutions when I got two, one solution from Lambert's W function? And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.